Hello, I'm Dr. Joel V. Gooden. Today we're talking about the literature review section of chapter two. It is generally 30 to 70 pages. It generally involves at least 50 citations. That's an understatement normally. Let's take a look. But first, I want to give you some hope. It's like chopping down a really big tree. You just keep chipping away at it. Um, put in time every day. Start working on this. Should have told you this, right? Um, I'll, I'll go back and sort of put this in. Start working on your lit review early. Start working on it early. Uh, there's no reason to be doing annotated bibliographies and classes even and not starting to build a lit review. There's no reason to start writing an introduction and not have that be useful toward your lit review. Everything you need to be thinking with a future time perspective, thinking towards the future, saying how will this be valuable because if you lay the groundwork for the lit review, You'll have the groundwork laid when you get to the lit review, and it will not be quite as daunting. It is difficult. It is lonely. I explained this earlier, that it's lonely because your chair cannot exactly tell you how to do it. They cannot tell you which articles are important. They cannot tell you what to pull from each article. This is really when whatever you brought to the doctoral stage where you start to dissertate, you get tested on that metal. You get tested it was how hard are you willing to work? Because there's no formula to it. There's can you read literature and research and understand it? Figure out where people are agreeing disagreeing and also add some expertise of your own to say to critique the articles and, and maybe supply some um, commentary some some expert commentary you know um, as a master presenter of the information to say well this is why there might be divergence or this is why this article might have a different finding and to sort of talk about, have some, some researcher acumen that you can bring to the table and, and actually show off your skills. And if you don't have that, you will need help during this portion. Um, let's look at what we have in front of us. We have, we're of course here, we have a level two heading be clear about that. Level 2 heading. Um, and then we have a level 3 heading example and a level 4 heading example. This is where you would start writing where it says text. Um, and you obviously change the words here but you keep the periods. So this is what a level 2 heading should look like. Notice that level two is lit up. And I think if we did this correctly, nope, didn't. Uh, it is not identified as a header um, as it should be, probably because I moved things around. Yeah. So anyway, if you have this labeled as a level three and four heading as they say then they will show up in your table of contents that way because you, if they're cited if they're normal they will not show up in your table of contents um, so if they're normal text so this is you identifying to the computer basically to the word software uh, or whatever word processor you're, you're using it's you identifying telling the software this is one of my headers and you click on that 
do this, it changes it, and it takes it out of the table of contents. Click on this, puts it back in your table of contents in whatever order it is in the paper. Um, so it's sort of like a hyperlink uh, within the paper. So you're going to have lots of themes. You might have level three headers. It's very likely, a little less likely, and it should be more rare that you have level four headers. If I see a student, so I'm going to guess five to 15 themes or subtopics. So let's go with the idea of online dating experiences. And then if I see level three heading, so this would be maybe uh, marketing of dating apps is maybe where you'd start. I don't know. You'd probably start with an introduction, um, just giving some basic statistics, um, some basic information, um, but then go into sort of whatever you think is important, and we'll discuss this, how to identify these things. Um, so some that I've decided for, um, for this example in marketing, user, well, type of apps. Um, I probably put history of dating first. I'm not sure if that's important. Um, user experiences, user outcomes, and gendered perspectives. So these would be headers that I would maybe use if I was going to do this lit review. Um, and I'm just making these up, um, but I'll explain a little further. And then you might have under the history of dating, um, you might have eras, right? So, um, might not go too far back, but letter writing. People used to write love letters to each other. Um, meeting in person is not necessarily a thing that's gone, but letter writing, meeting in person uh, may not go there. Texting, or I should say phone calls. That was a big era. Uh, so maybe this could be an introduction. Meeting in person as sort of the basic of throughout, but that it sort of waned and because communication has allowed us to communicate without being in person. And, and as technology ha has sort of taken over, um, and, and given us new opportunities, it sort of replaced some of the meeting in person, but also added new opportunities that um, are maybe more frequent than meeting in person, and the ability to, to match with somebody across the world, perhaps, right? So meeting in person, letter writing, phone calls, texting, um, dating apps. And that's sort of the progression that maybe we could use. And we would make all these, and I haven't done them correctly, but if we look down, first of all, I'm gonna put them as level three headers. Um, and then I'm going to put them in the format of level three heading down here. I'm going to bold them and put a period after each one. Um, and then I'll start writing about each one. And not in bold. Right. So you'll start that conversation and you'll talk about meeting in person. 
you, you might have a sort of a history of dating uh, general history of dating um, you know maybe say you know some of the main ways that have emerged was meeting in person which has um, declined um, for several reasons you might talk about that for a while um, and then get into letter writing phone calls and you're just sort of setting the stage providing context you might already have this in your introduction to your dissertation so you know obviously not be too repetitive this might not be a section to include but I'm trying to give you an example of how this might work so marketing um, obviously you can think of some of the some of the subtopics that might come under marketing like marketing to women Mark, uh, marketing to men uh, marketing to LGBTQA plus and then maybe marketing to interest groups I'll call it and this is where you get into maybe like the um, farmers only dot com um, you know certain types of people that en enjoy doing certain types of things um, and then maybe marketing to and maybe this should go together because they're sort of more they are more unique as of me making all this up um, I'm making it up based on just stuff I know about um, so it's not necessarily incorrect it's just not researched and I don't have the, the justification um, but marketing to ethnicities um, I saw a recent dating app that was um, I, I forget what it was called but it was for black people only um, and I thought that was sort of a novel idea and wasn't sure if it would work or not um, and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship and creating things and capitalism if you're into that um, so we'll see um, but you could talk about these things you could kind of combine these two as sort of like marketing towards a subset but generally these are all subsets aren't they these are the two main groups but then there is sort of a a big push basically the marketing you know the apps are either um, I won't get into it but that's something you could talk about and sort of again you're setting the stage you don't want to do too much stage setting especially if it's not too relevant to what you're trying to share that's important um, so let's look at what else is discussed there's only really two things I'm gonna go up though and look at what was first said in the very beginning of chapter 2 it said include several subheadings specific to the dissertation so we're going to do that the other thing that it says is devote approximately 30 to 70 pages to this chapter to include citations <coughs> to at least 50 relevant sources okay so essentially what we're doing with a literature review is let me go back down there we are essentially what we are doing is
determining the current state of knowledge about your topic, your dissertation topic. As of today, what do we know about X? For this example, X apparently is online dating experiences. So as of today, um, what is the current state of knowledge about online dating experiences? That is the point, the goal of a lit review. I'm going to get this out of the way. And then we're essentially going to be doing this. We're going to determine where info information overlaps, where it converges and diverges. And where are the gaps? Where where are people just not talking? And but maybe they've said, perhaps in their um, it's usually in a discussion section, uh, implications for future research or something like that. Is it sometimes based off the limitations of the study, and they they give ideas. Future researchers should focus on this next, and that's one reason we we go to such. Um, we want recent articles that will tell us, look, we're the cutting edge, but the next article, the next cutting edge should be this. Here's what needs to come next. So you're reading the tw 2020 article that says, here's what need, needs to come next. Guess who can be the first person to address that issue? Potentially you. Um, and that you know, goes back to the problem statement and having a problem that um, is really a gap in the research. Um, replication studies generally are not encouraged or even allowed sometimes, um, especially, um, well, it depends. North Central, I don't believe, um, allows uh, replication studies. We want you to show your research acumen. And so we want you to develop your own idea, um, to do your own study, to build it yourself, um, and to contribute a unique study um, to the conversation of research of literature, um, rather than replicating somebody else's idea, which doesn't necessarily show everything you've got, your skills, your ability, your your effort to develop your own skills. Uh, a lot of what the dissertation does is sort of test your resolve and your resilience to, to learn. And you do learn some very essential skills. Of course, you learn, you learn a lot of knowledge from doing this study, whatever it is, but you also learn how to do research. If you do it correctly, if you have a good chair, you should come out on the other side of this being a much, uh, a much stronger scholar. Whereas before, you might not have even really been a scholar. You'll come out on the other side of this thinking much more critically, logically, rationally, um, seeing the world a little differently. Um, I'm not sure if it's all good, but it is um, the experience of, of doctorate. Um, and so something to look forward to, um, asking everybody where they're to cite their sources when they're posting on Facebook. Determine the current state of knowledge about a particular topic. That's what we're trying to do in the lit review. And to point out any gaps especially the one that we want to do our study on. So um, here we're asked to do two things. Really includes more than that. Critically analyze, note the strengths and weaknesses, and synthesize the existing research. So we're synthesizing, but we're also pointing out well, this was a qualitative study with a very small sample, or a quantitative study with a small sample, for that matter. Um, it had a small sample. It wasn't a heter 
it wasn't a diverse sample that was very homogenous or it wasn't homogenous enough or um, just something about the study that could have been better and that's not to insult the author of the study it's to always point out what could have been better what research could be done to further the conversation that's really what research is doing every time we publish we are furthering the conversation and with your dissertation you're furthering the conversation of providing knowledge about a topic area um, so you want to rather than report on each study independently describe everything known on the topic by reviewing the entire body of work in other words we're not going to do one at a time um, avoid being a serial writer right avoid serial writing in other words you will not present all your annotated bibliographies one at a time rather you will weave all the information from all the articles you read together consider it a tapestry uh, a quilt um, something where where the threads are all interwoven um, so I'm going to talk about this a lot of people use a jigsaw puzzle analogy for the lit review each puzzle piece is an argument it's not like fighting it's a different sort of argument saying something making a point but as you make all these points you're putting them together and eventually you have your whole puzzle which which should approximate the current state of knowledge in your topic area again this is not a summary you're organizing instead of providing sort of a serial one at a time uh, summary of each article you're organizing all the information from all the articles pulling out the information from different articles that talks about the same things and organizing that into subtopics generally 5 to 15 your chair can help you with that um, but it's not formulaic it's it's sort of um, it evolves so to speak and so you you have to sort of figure it out um, and there will be people that can help you figure it out I can look at it your chair can look at it um, but to some degree there's a there's some uncertainty we can't say well you do this much and it'll be enough because we have to look and see if it's it's almost this un um, it's an unclear threshold that it's almost like falling in love when you know you know they say right and it's sort of the same answer same very frustrating answer with how much do I do for the lit review and it's sort of the answer is sort of well when you know you know when it's enough we'll know um, and I hate to say that to people but you basically what you want to do is be able to say okay I provided my knowledge and expertise on the if I had to choose here are the eight main priority topic areas or subtopic areas that I really think the readers need to know about in order to understand my study why I'm doing it and what has been done before um, when you can say that and when your chair agrees and your committee agrees then you've got it but it's really hard to put a very specific page limit on it we all write differently and 
I would say that diff the different types of content that we're writing about will lend themselves towards a shorter lit review or a longer lit review. It really depends. Um, so, this is going to sound a lot like, and I've, I've constructed a statement. The lit review is all about, um, and you, we saw this word, I don't focus a lot on critical analysis. I normally have my students focus first on synthesis, and then they can add in some critique. But if you really don't do both at once, you might miss it. So here's how it might sound. Researcher A, obviously you'd have a name in there with a citation, suggests that X is true. X stands for whatever their statement, the argument they're making. Researcher B also argues that X is true, but points out that the effects of X may be different from those that researcher A suggested. So here, it should be clear that subtopic X is the main idea covered in the sentences. Researchers A and B agree that X is true, but they disagree on the effects that X has, right? So this is both agreement and disagreement, convergence and divergence. But what links the two arguments is the fact that they are both about X. X should be one of your topics or subtopics. So this is the sort of thing and this is the explanation of how it is working. You're sort of saying, well, they sort of agree, they sort of don't. And, and you explain that to your readers. Okay. You're also asked to present a balanced, integrative, critical review of the literature, ensuring all points of view are included. Cover all important issues with a discussion of areas of convergence and divergence. Provide potential explanations for areas of divergence. And that's really where you have an opportunity for putting in some critical analysis. But every time you read an article, if you're doing annotated bibliography, you can always make a note of, whoa, I, I noticed their sample size is tiny, or um, this meta-analysis is very extensive, or, um, I don't know, there's all sorts of things that you could critique, but it's strengths and weaknesses generally. Um, or this is an outdated article, you know, um, it doesn't, it, it's not the current, you know, it may not include the current uh, technology that's out there for dating apps, um, or the most current dating apps, for instance. Um, so what we're going to look at is I'm going to create some space here all right so I want you to picture this is your study Okay, and the first thing, well, let's, let's think about this first as sort of a, a subtopic. Think of a subtopic. Um, and you, you'll think of it as you start reading articles. And you'll start putting them together. So, let's say that you have... Older individuals use dating apps, about 5% of older adults. Okay, that's that would be, and let's say you got that from a, an article you read. Um, let's pull in something else. Um, 
I'm going to bring in that Latinos use 55%, um, about 55% of Latino teenagers, or not teenagers, but dating aged, um, and we should really have included the rest of the information, you know, what age. Of course, I made all this up. I, these, none of this is true to my knowledge. Um, and then let's start pulling in some more. Um, we read an article and it tells us it tells us about um, not that. that there's a depression increase and it talks about depression increasing in in people um, another article we read tells us about the importance of checking that people are real when you're on a dating app and so we're starting to see all these things they're all over the place this is sort of these sort of match because they're sort of different populations but this is about age and this is about ethnicity this is about sort of a outcome this is sort of a process sort of issue and so we just keep looking um, one thing that sort of fits and I, I just made all these up by the way scams well that would go with this authentic authenticity check uh, ones that can check to see whether you're a real person um, here's one that I again made up males are not conscientious so um, you know in this hypothetical study um, they they found that males will just start eventually just swiping right on everybody because they're tired of reading they don't have time for that whatever um, and so they're not they're not gonna read the full profiles they'll just they, they have a different method of interacting with dating apps perhaps um, and then, so that's sort of a different population based on gender, right? And so, and then we have one body image filters. A lot of the apps have sort of uh, filters that you can make, obviously, your, yourself look 10 years younger and contoured and like you have makeup on. And, um, and sometimes this can affect sort of how... Um, you know, like you you might not look by, like your pictures if you meet in person eventually. So this sort of goes maybe with authenticity, but also with sort of it's a um, hypothetically, let's say this study was really found this to be a thing among females largely. Um, I can imagine some other subpopulations that it might affect, um, but. Uh, let's focus on that being female and and maybe it could get even get into sort of some a body image study um, so what about the apps um, this one having video chat this one says that video 25% of apps have video chat capabilities phone calling capabilities things like that well, that's interesting does that fit with anything else not really it kind of fits with the filter conversation and it's sort of the functionality um, so LGBTQ uses 17% of their population um, dating age individuals use um, dating apps and so where would that go I guess that would go sort of again with the population um, I'm eventually gonna build just a heads up I've I sort of created sort of a gendered understanding how different genders gender identities use dating apps um, could be let's let's say we decided 
um, that that was an important conversation. And so as we're doing that, I'm going to sort of search through here. Um, body image, this definitely goes up here with body image filters. Um, this study that I made up. It says nice guys hate dating apps. Well, that's interesting because the nice guys sort of get overrun by all the, the women get sort of um, jaded on all the N nastiness and pics and messages and so the guys that actually want to be nice um, are not trusted for instance um, according to this study I made up um, so this is another sort of gendered so once you start seeing a theme emerge Once you start seeing a theme emerge, you want to take note of it. And so we're seeing these sort of gender identity issues playing a role here. We may not want to include everything. Um, but we do want to take notice. Females often overwhelmed on dating apps. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I made it up, but it's interesting. Um, and so here we have some some things. I'm gonna I'm gonna move these over and sort of focus on these. So let's say we had a subtopic of gender identity experience you know, experience based on gender identity. And so we might, um, I can insert some text here. Um, what did I say? I wrote gendered experience. And so, all right, what do I want to know? What do I, what my readers need to know? Of course, this is based on what you're reading and, and what your overall topic is, but it, it might be good to sort of have a um, sort of a understand how different gender uh, identifications um, experience dating apps. Um, and so you might put sort of these three. Obviously, you don't want only these but you could start to create a conversation and I'm gonna point out that this sort of is further away from the center whereas females males these are all close to the center and so you want to I, I like to have the visual um, to sort of understand how things, how close are things to the core of what I want to talk about? If I run out of room, maybe these are the closest to really what I want to talk about. Um, and I really don't, getting into body image issues may not be as relevant to my study. And so I might want to leave that article out. Now, if I start seeing lots of articles on that, and it does fit, um, with my overall purpose and problem, then I would want to pull that in and say this is actually relevant. Right now, it's sort of tangential to the female, uh, the body image issues. Um, it could be worth noting, you just sort of play it by ear, you put one piece in at a time, just like a puzzle. Um, I wish it was that easy. Um, so, here I've shown you how to sort of form a sub Topic. This one on gendered experiences 
with an online dating app. Um, so now what we're going to do is sort of change it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull, well, I should have, yeah, I'm going to pull this in. And let's say we're looking at dating overall. This is our main topic. And so how do we even choose our subtopics? Notice I've written some down already. Um, let's say marketing, user experience, user outcomes. I'm, I'm really interested. I think my study needs to talk about user experience and outcomes. Gendered experience, I think that's a big part of dating because it's all about who you're attracted to. History of dating, that could be in the intro, so I'm not so sure about that. I'm going to put it further away from the center of my visual. Types of apps, again, that's sort of introductory, contextual information. I feel kind of the same about marketing. And so, I think I, you know, I would say these three are, are sort of, you know, definitely in my circle. And I'm not so sure, as I read more and more literature, I'm going to figure out, ah, do I need to talk about this in detail in my lit review? I might talk to my chair about that. Um, is marketing something I really need to get into or not? Types of apps that might even be combined with marketing. And so we can see how all these different topics down here might fit in. Um, authenticity check. Some of these you haven't seen because I didn't pull them over. Um, I, uh, there was an article on date rape at 17% 17 of those who meet on dates off of dating apps. Some say it's too costly, that's 15%, which I made up. Um, lots of lying goes on on dating apps. According to the citation I made up, 90% um, have body image issues. Um, so that's you know, if that were true, that would be concerning and, and potentially part of uh, a narrative. You need to include that in that narrative. Um, and this would be more of a, a tech issue, bad interface. 15% um, of apps, maybe. Um, apparently, I wrote down lying twice. Um, people that meet on dating apps, I said they divorce faster. I made that up. Uh, marriages, I said, last about 25% of the time. Um, and then depression uh, increases. Um, and so, well, let's look at this a little bit differently. There's another way that people often will sort of look at this. And, and so I'm going to take a step back. I want you to see it visually, but I also want you to see it if you were to do it a lot of people will use a matrix. So I've prepared one with the same example in mind. So let me pull this over. And so let's say we have our main topic. We might write that in subtopic and then a sub sub topic sub sub topic now you can decide which one you're working on but here is the basic template I'm gonna get rid of this just so it's not distracting um, and you can make these bigger obviously and you can build this table yourself by just inserting where did it go table right um, so Put source one, obviously put the citation names. And you might have to build lots and lots of tables um, if you're going to do it this way. Um, some people like to go old school and sort of get a big, you know, I forget what the paper's called, um, but you know, the, the big um, paper that you can write on with markers and just have it like laying out on the floor. I don't know if you have room for that. Uh, another possibility is to claim a wall, uh, use a whiteboard, um, chalkboard, all sorts of things. 
But let's say um, main idea one or A, main idea B, this would be C, D, E, F, G, so forth. Um, and you sort of want to just start organizing the information you're reading in each article. And let, we're going to take a look at how to do that. So I'm going to move this back up. And I'm going to start looking at some examples. So I again made all this up. I'm going to blow it up a little bit for you. So let's say that we read these four articles. You need to read more than four articles, just so you know. But let's say they all sort of talked about user experience. Um, we started seeing that theme or area of convergence and divergence sort of emerge, right? And so when we were reading Crawley um, 2017, we, um, he or she said depression is a major concern. It's twice as likely among those who are on dating apps. And we want to include the page number so that we can find it again if we want. It's worth the time to, to do that. You'll notice my page numbers are all over the place because I'm just making up numbers. I said um, anxiety, I, I said Crowley found that anxiety was three times as likely among people that are using dating apps, or three times as high, we could say. People feel less connected, and so I used a direct quote and provided the page number. Now, direct quotes you want to use sparingly, so you might decide to paraphrase this. Here, Bodinger said users experience exhaustion Users leave and return every two months on average, even without a long match. In other words, meeting somebody that they are like want to have a relationship with. Um, even if they don't meet somebody like that, they still leave about every two months because of the exhaustion. And it would tie in with this. And so users wish there was another way to meet people. Users take rejection personally. All sorts of things that I made up and attributed to these made up people with made up dates. 75% of users complain of little hope when dating online. 27% cite anger, they experience anger while dating online. 10% say that most of their matches result in dates. Of those 10%, only half say the dates were, quote, worthwhile. Hawkins, I, I said, said users complain of increased loneliness. Um, users say they have just too many options. There's just, they're flooded with um, just too many pictures and, um, and too many messages and it's overwhelming. Users start swiping aimlessly. Um, users get picky. So these are sort of in contrast to each other. You might take a note of that. Um, users change strategies to accommodate for success. So, well, I, it wasn't working when I was reading every girl's profile and every woman's profile, I should say, and, you know, and choosing only the ones I was most interested in. Nobody was matching with me. Maybe I'm not attracted to the people that are attracted to me. And so you might start swiping on other people sort of haphazardly and just to see who matches with you so you can better understand what girls are interested, what women are interested in you, for instance. Um, that's an example. <laughs> it comes to mind that I don't need to explain um, the, the made up findings that I'm presenting. Gendered issues, I talked about males generally take a good guy or bad guy approach, according to this made up literature, males approach is tied to different apps. It's more likely to be nicer on certain apps as um, opposed to others. Men lie about their height increase. They increase their height um, if they're shorter. And while women are typically likely to underestimate um, or to, to say they're shorter than they really are, especially if they're tall, um, females are more likely to match with transgender individuals. Females are often approached by couples. Males focus on appearance regardless of motivation, uh, whether that be sex or romance. 
LGBTQ report bravery and disappointment um, in terms of getting on the dating app. Um, the expe expectation, um, according to this article, I'd have to go up Charles that. Um, so it's in the same article as this information about user experience, hypothetically. It's in that same article, but we're pulling out all the things that fit with fit together and talk about the stuff that other articles are talking about. And we're sort of figuring out, here's all the information. So I could have this discussion um, presented with all this information. Um, women are five times more likely to be open to male or female. So um, open to both cisgender identifications and twice as likely um, to be open to trans or queer. This is as opposed to males. Um, again, data that I made up. Women are twice as likely to be promiscuous when dating online as opposed to dating um, in sort of an organic, in-person uh, meeting. Uh, men are 10 times more likely to send inappropriate content if they're dating online. Women experience, as opposed to dating in person, women experience greater date fear than men. And so these are the types of things that if you were doing a study on this and reading literature, you might hear these things, long-term sort of outcomes. Users experience an average of one match per day, one successful match or a real date per month. Dates lead to sex 20% of the time and romance 5% of the time. 2%, this is again the second author, 2% of matches that lead to dates result in marriage. Marriages for maps are twice as likely to fail. Emotional abuse is reported in 20% of outcomes. Physical abuse in 10%. Sex is for short-term thinking users while romance is for long-term thinking users. So hypothetically, this article sort of divided that up in that way, sort of um, characterizing users as short-term thinkers or long-term thinkers, and then as hybrid thinkers, which is the idea that I made up that people want the romance, but they're satisfied with the sex on a temporary basis. Um, in terms of marketing, um, gay-only sites make gay men more comfortable. Women-first apps like Bumble, where the woman has to make the first move, are five times as attractive to females. Apps that are uniracial, like black-only, have not had success, according to this article I made up. Apps that focus on interest areas have longer-lasting users, um, like Farmers Only. Apps focus on interface quality to engage a certain type of user, uh, like the, the interface you'll get with sort of plenty of fish will be much different than Bumble or The League, for instance. Apps are either picture emphasized or text emphasis, and some do a good sort of balance of both. Um, free apps are used 50 times more often, but result in 5% of the long-term relationships that occur from dating online. I made that up. Pay as you go apps are the ones that make the most money because they sort of um, bring you in. Um, of course, a lot of what I'm saying is prob may have some truth to it, but the numbers are very unlikely to be correct. Um, user experience, depression. So we talked about this one and I'm gonna pull it down and show you how, here it is again, how this um, could be written. So here we read about depression, anxiety, feeling of disconnectedness, loneliness, and notice how I put it together. And I, I didn't do everything that's listed here, but I wanted to give you an example of how it might sound. With regard to user experience, researchers generally agree that users continue the usage of apps or dating apps despite constant problems. Bo Dinger, 2018, focused on what she referred to as triggers, explaining that users often perceive 
not matching with somebody when they're trying to match with them. When you swipe right on somebody, they obviously didn't swipe right on you yet, at least. They experience that as rejection. So I could have explained it better, right? Users take each rejection personally. Bodinger went on to say that most users will eventually experience exhaustion, a sentiment shared by the findings of Charles Stat, 2020, who found that users will leave a dating app on average every two months and then return at a later time, typically within three to eight months. Charles Stat specified that the average of two months was not affected by matches that ended in happy relationships as those were infrequent. Both Hawkins and Crawley, so I'm talking about all these, just this information up here, putting it together in words, in, in paragraph form. Both Hawkins and Crawley's studies noted mental health concerns among users. Hawkins explained that his participant users complained of increased loneliness while searching for a partner on dating apps, even when they were not on screen. In other words, that whole sort of period of time was lonely for them. Crawley had a similar finding, wherein his participants explained a feeling of disconnection despite multiple engagements. So those are very similar ideas. They describe it a little bit differently. Disconnection versus loneliness. Um, and so his participants compared dating online to being on social media, suggesting that the interaction did not mean that you were having conversations of substance. So this is just a little bit of how you might be able to put all this information, or some of it at least. I stopped, didn't do all of it um, for even just this one subtopic, but you can see how it starts to flow in sort of a story of putting the articles together and the information from the different authors and the way they described it and how their findings differed a little bit. Um, could have gone on, but you can search for um, other dissertations. And, and I would also suggest websites that teach you how to synthesize. And generally, there will be resources at your university that will explain better how to synthesize. But I, I'm trying to show you the types of wording that you might use. In terms of wording, let's go up again. Researcher A suggests that X is true. Researcher B also argues that X is true, but points out that, that, that the effects of X may be different from those suggested by researcher A. It is clear that subtopic X is the main idea, right? in both of these studies. Researchers A and B agree that X is true, but they disagree on the effects of X. There's both agreement and disagreement, but what links the two arguments is the fact that they both concern X. Avoid serial writing. You don't want to write in a series. You want everything to be woven together, synthesized. Um, otherwise, I would just present one article at a time, and it would be very boring, and it would not really give you the full conversation. You need to think about research, research as a conversation taking place, um, and by understanding how the findings are sort of aligning with each other or sort of conflicting with each other, you find out where the topics of interest are, and also where what is known and what is not known. Usually you're going to insert transition sentences at the beginning of introducing another article. Um, so you might say something like, similar to the findings of Gooden 2019, um, Sharon Dunn, 2020, found that 90% of males want to find a lifelong 
partner, but will accept a one night stand. Let's just make that up while we're at it. Um, so we've explained the relevance of the article. It's similar to the finding. And this is what I mean by a transition. I should have called it a phrase. It's really a phrase, right? Introductory phrase, similar to the findings. And at the same time, I'm establishing the relevance of sharing them. In this example, I've just talked about Gooden's finding. And now I'm going to switch to Sherrington and say that they're similar. In fact, look how close they are. Gooden found maybe 80% of males, whereas Sherrington found 90%. And maybe there was a little bit of difference in the way they studied and what they asked. And maybe Gooden didn't say one night stand, but maybe he said short term relationships. So it's still in alignment. It's still an area of convergence. Um, you don't want to overwhelm your readers. Citing 50 sources that say the same thing may not be useful. Stay organized. Implement good flow. Break down the information in such a way as to make it palatable. Make it edible. Make it consumable so that people feel like they're reading something that is being shared with them in almost story format. It's not going to be the most entertaining thing ever, but it is going to be presented in a way that makes sense. That shares, perhaps, for, for those that open up your dissertation, they're interested in it for some reason. Keep, you know, one thing I learned as an educational psychologist early on, I think it came from the arts model, um, by Keller, who I studied under. Um, the arts model said gain and maintain attention. First, you've got to get the attention, and you've got to maintain it. So keeping it. Um, uh, so you've got them reading your, your dissertation. How are you going to keep their attention? It's very important. Um, of course, your job is not to entertain, but Avoid extraneous information and focus on the priority germane information, the information that people need to know to understand your study, to be prepared for what you're going to do in Chapter 3. Speaking of Chapter 3, I hope I've given you an idea of how to do the biggest part of Chapter 2, which is the Lit Review. So here we had sort of themes. We were asked to critically analyze. I didn't really give you an example of that, but we talked about pointing out sample size, pointing out this wasn't a longitudinal study. It was quasi-experimental instead of experimental, or whatever um, things you think need to be note, noted and noteworthy. And that does require some research skill in order to really understand what might be missing and to critique the articles and to say, well, um, this article differed in its findings, but that could have been because they had a very small sample size and they were all from the same area instead of a diverse sample size larger from the entire United States or world or whatever. Um, again, Rather than giving us just a list of annotated bibliographies, you are going to synthesize. And hopefully you understand a little bit better how to synthesize. Um, and how to sort of start to put together the different areas of discussion in your lit review. I know this looks overwhelming. This is a subtopic. Here is the overall main topic. So each one of these would be five to ten pages. Five to ten pages. Some might be five pages. Some might be fifteen. 
I would guess that these three might be sort of the longer subsections of this lit review. Whereas these, if they were even included, might be more like five to eight pages. So they'd be smaller. And so you just, you look at the lit that you're reading, you always think about what is relevant to your study that you're trying to do, and you figure out, you let the themes evolve. Let them emerge on your own. Don't try to force it. You don't get to choose necessarily. You might have some ideas of what are the relevant topics. Just like I had some ideas of what would be relevant topics to online dating experiences. I have those ideas, but I haven't done the literature review to really do it properly. You need to go one article at a time, start filling out a matrix. You can use this on an Excel spreadsheet or any spreadsheet for that matter. Um, and just start organizing the information that you're reading. You don't want to have to go back. If it's useless, okay, don't write it down. But if you think it might be useful, take the time to make note of it, include the page number, include any important quotes. It's, it's really nice not to have to go back to the original articles because sometimes difficult to find them again. Use a very good organization system. A lot of people use um, a citation manager. Um, I'm gonna let you choose and let your chair help you choose which citation manager you want to use. Some are free with your university. I'd look into that if I were you. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that this synthesis discussion is really the way that you need to be discussing your entire dissertation. Even in the intro of chapter one, you need to be saying, well, researcher A says this. Similarly, researcher B says this, but added this point, and then you move on maybe. So it's not so much about the critique and the convergence, but it is about telling the story in terms of multiple articles at once. Um, next, we're gonna talk about the summary to the chapter two, and then transitioning on into chapter three. Thank you very much.